you may have never really paid it that much attention, but what part of the club are you actually focusing on when you swing it? What are you actually developing your awareness of this club around? Is it the head, where the shaft is? Is it where the handle is? Because there's a whole instrument here and we need to attune ourselves to the whole golf club, not just parts of it. We need to be aware of where the whole club is in space. So I want you to think, first of all, about how we actually swing this club. To do that, we need to actually feel it because this is a doing thing, not a thinking thing. We need to, to feel the swing. We actually need to move and we need to develop some kind of sensory awareness for that movement. So we need that sensory feedback, which means we have to move. It's not just conceptual. We have to move and experience it. So what I want you to do is take the golf club in your trail hand so my right hand is a right hander. And I just want you to swing the club head side to side. And I want you to just recognize before I do it, what your strategy is. What's your mode of operation to swing that club head from side to side? And I'm guessing you're doing this. In fact, I'll put my last dollar on it that you're doing that, okay? But maybe there's another way. Maybe your attention was on the club head because I said club head. So attention becomes focused on the club head and we move that club head side to side and that's swinging the club head. But what we're actually doing here is we're using the club head, we're action in this end of the golf club and this becomes a reaction. Of course, physically we're acting here, but perceptually our intention is to action here because we're moving the club head. So now I'm moving the club head on an arc and that's okay. I'm swinging it from side to side. So I'm achieving that objective, which I asked. But there is another way. What I want you to try now is moving this end first. So now we're going to use the butt end of the golf club to move the club head. And this is a very different action, but it's swinging the club head. It's another form of swinging the club head. What it's actually enabling me to do now is control the action. I'm actually controlling this now, not only the speed of it, and I can speed it up, change direction very easily, but I can also determine when I actually speed it up. I can actually change, if you like, that location of the snap, the crack of the wrist, that wrist snap, i.e. the release, on the way back as well, and on the way through. So it's a flailing action. And it's just a horizontal action at the moment, from side to side. But I'm using this end of the golf club, not this end, so this is now reacting. Now, the club head doesn't have any nerve endings in it. We're not actually feeling the golf club here, we're feeling it through here. This is where the nerve endings are, this is our connection to the golf club, this is our interaction. So we're actually actioning with the handle, and this is reacting. But visually and sensory wise, this becomes part of the body schema, this becomes an extension of us. We develop recognition for this, and a feel for it. And we can amplify this awareness by recognising what's happening here, but recognising what the reaction is. So actually, what we've got now is we've got a club head that's reacting to our action here. And what you're seeing now is lag. Because now I've just taken the club with both hands and I'd suggest you try this with me too, and now make the action from side to side. And just imagine if I stopped in a place desirable for impact. And if I just tilt down now, look at this. We've now got the all important shaft lane. We've got the sweet spot descending to the golf ball. We've got the leading edge, we've got the handle leading, we've got all those impact conditions that the textbooks say we should be adhering to, but actually it's just a product of a functional movement. It's just starting the movement from the right place. This is the origin, not this. So thinking of the origin of that pattern, this is where we're actioning it. Now obviously there's other movement patterns involved to move this. We're actually now starting to move the body. It's not just the wrists, it's the arms. And what I can do is I can actually now lengthen this. I can make this a longer action and I can either let it go early and that might be a movement we can all associate with and we, we may be trying to get away from this into a more desirable orientation like this because that's how the golf club has been designed to be used on a descending angle of attack, sweet spot, coming out to the golf ball. Notice where the club head's going. If I focus on the club head first and use the club head to swing, the club is actually reacting this way. The, the handle's moving back, the butt end's moving back to let the club go forward. Now this is a very kind of noisy action. And what I've just done is I've lost now the handle, I've lost control of the handle. I've thrown the club head, I'm now reacting to this. So this is a reaction to this swinging. And I'm really out of control now. I've not got the control of the handle, I've lost control. 
But if I'm here, I've still got control. I'm still influencing the direction. I could go out to the right. I could go to the left. I can go down. I can go up. We can do it later. We can do it earlier. So suddenly, we've opened up so much more opportunity to move this golf club and develop a repertoire, a much more rich full, expansive repertoire that we can now start to develop an awareness for and refine and start to, in our minds, connect it to some kind of intention with a ball fly, intention with a strike, intention with a swing. So we're matching the action now to the perception based around our intention. So now we're starting to feel the timing of this. It's not the club head going first, and the handle going back, which means I'm getting to the ball very early, as opposed to this, it's much, much later, I'm not at the ball yet, I'm not releasing. So if you've got that sense in your swing that it's over too quick, you're at the ball before you know it, and you can't really control this thing, maybe you're actioning it from the club head, and not the handle. I'd start with maybe chipping or pitching. So we've got this horizontal action here, and we can very quickly just tilt forward into a posture, and we can make some little strikes with the ground. And then we can do that from the golf ball. So what we're experiencing is this flail, the flail on the way back, the flail on the way through. Now what you'll also notice is the body's moving a certain way because this is a horizontal action here. And guess what we're doing? We're starting to move. You can see how the body is reacting to facilitate this action here with the handle. The body's reacting and it's starting to move side to side. If I was on a GRFI, probably going to go now side to side. Notice how the board reacts. I'm actually moving the board before the actual reaction with the club. So now the origins change. I'm actually now actually in this movement from the ground. The body reacts, this reacts and this reacts and now we've got that all important sequence from the ground and we're getting a sense for how we move in the body to swing the club. So now it's action from the body, the inside swings the outside. And this is a horizontal action, and a lateral action with the body. We can also experience this without a board, of course. You don't have to have a GRFI. You could use <laughs> tennis balls. In particular, a tennis ball, split into two, place it on the floor, place them under the balls of the feet, the Mets heads, where you would generally where you jump from. And now, just make that same movement, action in it from here, so swing the club head. And notice the pressure on the tennis balls. And speed it up, when you speed it up, you're creating bigger forces, it amplifies that feedback, you can really sense it. But don't make the swing any bigger, just speed it up. So that requires a little bit of focus here, a bit of discipline, not to just let it start going wild, keep it short, but speed it up from the handle. And notice how you use these tennis balls, ramping up the forces, you're ramping up the speed that you're using them at, and you're starting to recognise how the body accesses its power. And then step off there and explore it now, maybe tilt forward a little bit, so now you're on more of an incline, a bit more like a golf swing. And you can feel how that lateral force really helps to create this momentum and change direction. So if you're thinking about how do I change direction of my golf swing, another buzzword in golf, transition, which is just a change of direction, you're experiencing now what that is and where it's coming from. And it's not trying to lay the shaft down or trying to intentionally squat or intentionally turn the hips or pull down. Because as soon as we start pulling and we apply a force on the handle, what happens is the golf club starts to become thrown. As soon as I apply a force, pull down, the club swings. If I was to place this club here at an angle, that's kind of like an, a, a back swing position. If I pull the handle this way, that's going to rotate. The club rotates. If I kept pulling, it would just follow that force. But in a golf swing, what we've done is we've just literally swung this weight now out, away from us, by pulling the handle. And now, I've got this kind of form through impact, which is the club head action in this reacting, 
And now we're not using the golf club the way it's designed. We're not using its affordances for performance, which is deal off, bring the sweet spot to the ball, use the leading edge, use the bounce, using the properties of the golf club. All these performance characteristics are so important. We've got to recognize how we use them and how we action with our body to create the reaction with the club. So what we're doing here is we're creating some really powerful cues. This stimulus is important for recognizing how we can use our body. And this is just in the lateral direction. This is just horizontally. If I want to speed this thing up, we can start to rotate the body. So we could use these discs. These come with the Gerofi system. It's not a sales pitch, by the way. You can use other stuff, and I'll show you what else you can do in a minute. What I've got here is rotation. And if I introduce that rotation first, so watch, I'm not going to move the handle intentionally. I'm not going to definitely move the club first. I'm going to spin the discs. And by spinning the discs, it creates the chain. So this is the rotary element to help accelerate the club head. By rotating, we get this lateral movement that we experienced earlier. When we combine the two, we're going to amplify these forces. We're going to accumulate more momentum. It's not as easy to replicate that without the discs. What you can do is just explore hip movement, because essentially what that was, was hip rotation. Okay, well, I'm not really using the the feet and the ankles, there's no real friction here at the, at the ground, so it's all about the hips. So it's just recognizing hip mobility. Notice the hips are rotating and the pelvis rotates. So actually now, just be aware of what this pelvis area is doing here. What's your pelvic rotation line? Are you actually letting the belt buckle rotate? And what's rotating the belt buckle? It's the action from the ground. So you'll often see on the videos, the walking exercises, the balance pad exercises. What I suggest you do, is just take your golf club, hold it there, both hands on the club and just twist your pelvis. Notice how much leg action you need to rotate the belt buckle. And then take your grip and now use that action to initiate the whole chain. So it's starting from here and now the body's going to react and the butt end of the club reacts and then the actual club end reacts. And now we've got that chain. So we're starting to introduce all these forces to accumulate more momentum and we're in control of it. So the whole swing starts to develop based around all these cornerstones, movement principles. These are biomechanical principles to help you create a golf swing, which are fundamental movements, by the way, but there's one missing one at the moment, and this is gonna really ramp it up, because we've looked at this direction here, the horizontal, and we've inclined it, and we've increased the speed with the rotation. What we can also do now is add more force, and that is the vertical displacement. So now, not only now, if we've got this action here on the horizontal plane, we can go this way, vertical. So I've got the same action, but in the vertical plane. So I'm using the lateral movement to speed it up. That's giving us the swing and the change of direction. As soon as I want to change direction, the club will swing. So it goes from a linear kind of motion very quickly into an angular motion. But it's the braking force that creates this. And guess what? We can ramp this up by going down and up. So if I drop and then go up, bang, we get more speed just by going down and up. And in a golf swing, this is the vertical displacement. This is us using the vertical force. So we can start to recognize that with the tennis balls. If you go back on the tennis balls and now start to use this in a vertical plane and start to ramp it up, drop and then pop, you'll see that on the videos, dropping the pelvis, popping the pelvis, that's elevating the club, dropping and lifting the handle here, but you're doing it by action in the body movement, not by just using the hand and pulling, you're not really going to get much force from this pulling action here, it's reacting to the chain, it's reacting to the forces we're creating with the tennis ball, so now you're creating this lateral, you can rotate the body a little bit as well, and you can start to ramp it up, but it's gonna be out of control. This is letting go. This is actually physically letting go. So the term letting go can be linked to the psychological aspect of this, but actually it's very much linked to the physical letting go. Letting go of that release, but doing it at the right time. If we're releasing early, we ain't letting go, we're holding on because the club's already gone. And now we've lost control of the handle and now we've got to try and hold on. Whereas here, we're in control, and then we're gonna let go. 
and it's the vertical, and you can really sense it with the tennis balls, the pushing off the ball, the loading, you'll be squashing it as you go down, and then you'll be pushing off it, and you can really feel that interaction with the tennis ball in conjunction with the lifting of the handle of the foot end, it reacts, boom, and the club goes. So with both hands on the club, and an incline now, so tipping forward, we can start to feel the letting go. There's an up and down, side to side, and a rotation of the body. And the rotation of the body now starts to create the arc around the body, which is a combination of the up, the side to side, the incline, and the rotation of the body. And it creates the arc. So ultimately what you're doing is you're timing the release. And that is how we recognise the golf club to optimise our impact and explore all the potential shots that we can do with this.